when we look at motion in two dimensions, what we mean by this, this is a projectile motion. I like this picture here that I have. It's a, it looks like a unicorn. It's like projectile vomiting some uh, rainbows. But uh, I mean, this is what projectile motion looks like, right? It looks it's something that goes up and sort of goes down again. That's because uh, you can really break up its motion into two dimensions, right? That's why it's called, oddly enough, uh, motion in 2D. So what I mean by this, the really important thing when you deal with these kind of questions, they don't show up all that often, but when they do, they're pretty sneaky unless you really know what you're doing. So uh, components of the velocity. What I mean by this is if you're given a velocity. So in this case right here, maybe you're told that the velocity is called uh, V. Um, and if you're looking at that velocity V, it's you know at some angle theta above the horizontal then you can consider this as two different vectors. Since velocity is a vector, you could consider it as two different vectors added together. So that's why I've redrawn it like this. And this is actually kind of how it looks in your uh, data booklet. Did you know you don't have to memorize how to deal with this stuff? It's actually there. A lot of people just forget to look. They write it with an A and they put an AX and an AY, but same, same, right? So in this case right here, if I'm looking at my V here, my V vector, it can be written as the sum of two other vectors. In this case, this vector plus this vector equals that vector. So in this case right here, you could say Vx and you can say Vy. And what's really important in two-dimensional motion is splitting it up into its components. What I mean by that is the different parts. There's a velocity in the x direction that's going you know, straight across, and there's a velocity in the y direction, which is going straight up. It's related to the angle, and you can do your sort of uh, right angle trigonometry tricks, you know, so katoa, some people call it. Otherwise, you know, here it is. It's v, y is v sine theta, and v, x is v cos theta. The way I remember it is that to me, sine kind of sounds like y. It doesn't, but it kind of does. It has an i sound at the end of it. Sine, y, well, it doesn't really work, but there you go. That's how I remember it. So the important key thing is this, in the horizontal direction, in other words, in the vx, you know, in the x direction here, that's horizontal, uh, it's really, really nice and easy. It's not accelerating because it goes at a constant speed in whatever uh, it's doing here. So it's super easy. What I mean by super easy, that means that your speed then will just be equal to, or in this case, you could even say the velocity, will just be equal to your displacement divided by time. You know, velocity is distance over time. Uh, which is in meters and that's in seconds. So that is super easy, but it's really important because uh, almost half the time you're just needing, you know, you're needing this at some point. You got to remember in the horizontal direction, no acceleration. So it's super easy. You just use your, um, use your equation of non-accelerated motion of constant uh, velocity. Uh, but in the vertical direction, it does accelerate. That's because you can consider this thing, and let's say you're being, you know, something is being launched up at an angle. Uh, you can consider it as it's going a constant speed in that direction, you know, over the ground, but it's the equivalent of being thrown straight up because there's a straight up component. So because of that, that straight up component, that has gravity acting on it downwards. So its speed is going to change, won't it? Its velocity will change, so it will be accelerating. Because of that, we have to use the equations for accelerated motion. Remember those four equations, right? So you know, then you'll have to use this sort of UVAST stuff and you'll have to figure out what to do. So I've got an example for you. Uh, and it's one that starts off okay and then it gets really gross. And I just want to show you a really gross example so you know how to deal with it. So you're launched off a cliff that's 100 meters high. So maybe I'll try to draw it here. Uh, so here we go. Maybe I'll do it in blue here. So I've got a cliff right here and it's 100 meters high. And you're launched off it at a speed of 50 meters per second, but at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. What that means then is you're being launched like this. So this here is 30 degrees here, and your speed here is 50. 50 meters per second. This is what's happening. And if you're not sure about the path that you're going to follow, I'll trace it for you. It's going to be a um, parabola. That means you're going to go something like this. And you're going to hit the ground. Now, some people think these are here are really, really complicated questions, but if you see it in the right way, they can be really easy. So here, what is your maximum height above the ground? You're like, oh God, how do I deal with that, All right? I mean, then you might actually want to be doing like what the unicorn is doing and you want to throw a maybe rainbows, I don't know. So if you're doing this, your maximum height above the ground, that's right here. Your maximum height here, that's this value right here. You want to find out what's this height. And that sounds really complicated, doesn't it? 
I think the key thing here, first of all, is to break it up into components. Remember I showed you right here to break it up into these different pieces? So let's do that with the velocity here. So we'll do that with our velocity. Uh, so in this case here, we have our velocity, which goes up like this. It's at 50 meters per second. Um, that means we have a Vx and we have a Vy here. And if I'm going to do these, then I have to write out Vx. And Vx is going to be V cos, in this case right here, theta, which is 30 degrees. So V cos theta. Remember to have your calculator in degree mode. And this is V sine 30. Let's actually figure them out on the calculator. I'm going to use the uh, TI-84, but you could use whatever you like. I'm going to make sure my mode is in degree mode. Yes. Um, I like there's a South Park meme, you know, it says if you forget to turn your calculator into, uh, you know, if you forget to put your calculator from degree mode, you're going to have a rad time. Haha, <laughs> because you have to be in radians. In this case, I do cosine of 30, I multiply that by uh, 50, and I get an answer of 43.3 .3 meters per second. That's enough uh, decimals. And the other one then is sine of 30, I do that times 50, and I get an answer of, uh, what did I get? Uh, yeah, 25 meters per second. All right, I'm going to need these numbers. So what's your maximum height above the ground? If I look at this then, the max height above the ground, hmm, we can deal with UVAST and try to figure out what happens at max height. This is going to be the key thing. At maximum height, what can you tell me about the horizontal speed? Nothing. It's going to be constant, isn't it? It's constant at 43.3. Its horizontal speed is always going to be 43.3 meters per second as it goes along here. Uh, but it's maximum height. It's going to be doing all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Maximum height, though, something very special happens with the speed in the vertical component. Okay, so here we're going to be considering things in the vertical world. We don't care about horizontal, we just care about vertical. In the vertical world, it is accelerating. So because of that, our maximum height then, uh, think about carefully. What happens right when it's at its maximum height? Vertically speaking, it stops. Of course, horizontally, it's still moving. But vertically speaking, it goes up, it stops, and it drops down again. So from that, then, V is zero. That's the key here. Your final speed is zero at maximum height. That's the key. Your initial speed is, let's see, in the vertical direction, in the Y direction. Maybe I'll put a little Y here. What? Yeah, these are all in the Y direction here. There's no component needed for time. Uh, so UY is going to be 25. Positive 25 because you're going up. Acceleration is going to be 9.81 because gravity is accelerating you downwards. And because it's downwards, I have to throw a negative on it. And then I want to solve for s. So can you think of any equations? Uh, by the way, I don't know t. So can you think of any equations that don't have t in them that have an s in it? And if you look carefully at your different equations, uh, you should be able to find one that goes v squared equals u squared plus 2as. If I'm going to use that equation then, uh, look at what happens here. v cancels out. Well, not cancels out. It's 0. Uh, so then I have uh, u squared. Uh, well, I want to solve for s, don't I? So I'm going to get s equals, let's see, it's going to be minus u squared, because I'm going to move the u squared over. I'm going to divide that by 2a. So in this case, it's going to be minus, uh, what is it, 25 squared. And it's minus outside the bracket. So I do 25 squared, then I do a minus. Divide that by 2 times a, and a is negative 9.81. Good news, and the negatives are going to cancel out. You're going to get a positive answer, which is good. You should go up. And if it was a negative, that means you go down. So I'm just going to do this. So 25 squared, I take that answer, I divide that by... 2 times 9.81, and I end up with an answer of my displacement is 31.855 meters. And then you might say, okay, so I'm allowed uh, how many digits for this? Oh, I wrote this kind of poorly here, but let's just say it was, uh, we'll just do it to the nearest, well, I guess we only get two digits to do it. So we'll use two digits. So we'll say that means S is 32 meters, right? Is this the answer? Nope, not quite. This is needed. It's not quite there. Think about it. That is your height above where you took off. But there's still the height of the cliff. That's the sneaky part about this question here. So actually, your final answer is going to be, um, at v, uh, whoops, not V. Your displacement will actually be 32 plus 100. So that'll be 132 meters. Uh, if you're only going to use two decimals, I guess you should say uh, it's 130. You know, because you only allowed two decimals here, but let's just say it's 132 meters. So uh, that is a pretty good example, I think. To do the second part of this question for how far away from the base of the cliff will you land, I think it helps to just sort of redraw it again, just to make sure it's more clear. So here we go, and you're going up in the air, and you're sort of landing down here. 
So the value you're looking for, for how far away from the base of the cliff, what you're really looking for here is this distance right here. And that's a displacement, we're going to call it S, and it's in the X direction, so we'll label it SX. And remember now, in the horizontal direction, things are really easy. Uh, it doesn't accelerate, it goes at a constant speed, this constant horizontal value of 43.3 uh, meters per second all the time. So how far will it go? Well, do you remember your uh, equation for uh, horizontal motion? It's super easy, right? It's just uh, VX is just SX over T. It's not accelerating, it's just velocity is distance over time. So in this case, if I wanted SX then, I could just solve for that, right? I'm putting all the subscripts just to keep them uh, straight here. Um, so if I want SX by itself, then I have to make sure that I put uh, T on the top, so then I get VX times T, and that's all I need. So you gotta think, oh, well, is that it? Yeah, it's that it. Uh, that's easy. Um, I know VX, VX is 43.3, so I know that value. But I don't know T, here's the problem. Here's the sneaky part. This is why it's actually a sneaky question. Because we actually don't know the T value. So this is the problem. We're stuck. In the horizontal direction, we can't do any more. But that means in the vertical direction instead, maybe we can get some help there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look now in the vertical. Because although in the X direction, in the X uh, component, you're going at a constant speed, uh, in the vertical direction, you know, you're of course going up and then back down again. Which means when you land right down here, your vertical velocity is going to be something very different, right? So we don't know what's going to happen. We just know the initial ver vertical velocity is 25. So let's look at this in the vertical world. Maybe I'll write this U, V, A, S, T again. And what I'll do, of course, is put subscripts everywhere just to make sure we keep this uh, so we know what's going on here. We've got Y's everywhere here. So UY, the initial Y velocity, we know that it's 25 and it's positive 25. The final Y velocity is not zero like we did before. That was for the maximum height, that was the case. But what happens is when it lands, it's going down. It's going down really fast. It's gonna be some big negative value, a lot bigger than 25. So we don't know what it is. We know the acceleration was 9.81 meters per second squared and we know it's negative because it acts downwards. What I like is for this displacement, it's really easy to figure out. For displacement, you just have to think about um, where do you start and where do you finish? Although you go way up and do all these crazy things, as far as your vertical displacement though, it's really simple. You start off at 100 meters, sure you go up above it, but all we care about for displacement is the final result. You end up, in the end, at 100 meters below where you started. So that's why that just makes it negative 100. And T, that's what we want, we want the time. So then we have to think about what's one of the equations of motion that has t in it that doesn't have a v in it. If you look it up, you'll actually see there's uh, this one. It goes, uh, how does it go? It goes uh, s equals ut plus one half a t squared. And if that's the case, I'm just gonna try to see if I can delete that little one right here. I didn't like my plus being so high up. Um, there we go. So if we use this equation, I mean, we, we can do this, the only problem is nothing cancels out. You're used to things canceling out, it becomes a lot easier. This one here, nothing cancels out. That's what makes this one harder. So S, let's put that in. We get negative 100 equals U times T. U, which is uh, 25 in the vertical, yes, so 25 times T, plus we have 1 half of A, which is negative 9.81 times T squared. This is a quadratic equation I have to solve. And you could be expected to solve this in paper two. This could be that hard. Um, let's maybe figure it out here. We'll put all the t's on one side. So uh, one half of negative 9.81, what's that? That's uh, negative 4.905 t squared. We have plus 25t. And we have uh, the minus 100, I'm gonna move it over. So I get a plus 100. And I'm basically setting it equal to zero. If that's the case, then I can use my trusty calculator, which you probably have as well. There's lots of ways of finding zeros of quadratics. You could graph it and find the zeros. You could ask your calculator function to help you, and I'm actually gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna put it in. Uh, I have to put in the A and the B and the C terms. And I end up with seven, seven seconds. That's my answer for the time. Now, I can put it all together though, can't I? Because now that I know the time, um, then I can put it together and say, fine, the x uh, component then of the displacement 
is going to be here. I'm just going to maybe separate them just so we don't get too confused here. There we go. Different question altogether. Um, we use this SX equals 43.3 in this case right here times 7.7 .7 seconds. And if we do that, we have meters, uh, we have uh, seconds here. No, we have meters per second times seconds. That ends up with meters, so that's good. The units work out. Oops. So I have 43.3 times 7.7 .7 and end up with 333 meters. And I'm, oh, if I'm only allowed two digits, then I'll say fine, it's 330 meters. So good enough. That'll be my final answer. Phew, pretty tough, but you can still do it.